Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Goodness Speaks. I'm Rochelle Fletcher, your host for Goodness Speaks, and I'm a speaker, um, worship leader, the co-founder of The Goodness Project, and we have locations all around the nation in Dallas-Fort Worth, Nashville, Buffalo, Canada, and Israel, and we help families and children in crisis. We partner with hundreds of nonprofit organizations and churches and communities around the nation and in Canada and Israel. In fact, in Israel, we work with all the mayors of each city to make sure the needs are met. And today we're going to have a very special show. We're going to talk about the power of community. You know, God created us to be connecting with one another, to connect, to help one another, to love one another. And that's the mission of our life should be to show the goodness of God and to give goodness a voice in the earth. And that's what we want to inspire you to do, not just share about what we're doing, but have this movement of goodness that goes all around the world. And we would love for you to connect with us. Go to our website if you haven't connected. Just be a part of what God is doing at thegoodnessproject.com. We have volunteers, we have prayer warriors, we have people who come and serve. There's so many things that you can do to be a part of this movement. We want you to connect with us. Every Tuesday morning right here, uh, actually the second and fourth Tuesday of every month, I'm going to be on here with you. So mark your calendars and just want to thank Life Network for Women and Paula White Kane for creating this network and giving us an opportunity to share uh, life inspiring stories with you and the stories of others. I've got some special guests with me here today. I'll be introducing to you in just a moment. But before we do that, I just want you to know the reason why I do this is so that you can use use your voice to bring transformation into the culture and community is a big part of doing that and you matter your life matters and you can just share hope with someone by sitting down and having a conversation with them just letting them know you care that's a huge part of community we're going to talk a little bit more about that but also you can show the goodness of God in tangible ways. You can be a part of connecting resources to those that are in need and living a life of generosity that builds the kingdom. And my desire for you is that you're encouraged, that you're exhorted, and that you are equipped to do the work of the kingdom. And I'm so honored to be a part of, of just joining. I take this very seriously. I, I love being with you and spending this time and, and I value it so much. And I think it's just precious that we have this opportunity to connect all around the world digitally. If, if COVID's done anything, it's increased that. It's increased the footprint of us being able to, to join together through Facebook Live or through YouTube or Zoom or however you're watching right now so that we can stay in community and stay connected. But we're gonna talk a little bit more about how we can uh, build communities and the power of community today. Um, you know, the people that you choose to spend time with, it, it has an enormous impact on your identity, on your values, on your goals and your growth. And relationship is a big part of the gospel. We grow together. We grow more when we do things together. God never created us to be alone. And so our society today is more divided than ever. I, I can't think of a time that we've been more divided. There's been a lot going on politically. There's been a lot going on all around the world to try to create division. But that's the enemy's tactic. That's always what the enemy tries to do. Whereas God's heart is always to unite. And we talked about that on The Last Goodness Speaks. He created us to serve one another, to help one another, to sharpen one another. And because he created us to do that, we're, it's not about uh, individualism. It's about community. It's about joining together to, if your neighbor's in need, right? It's like the Acts Church. If they all brought their resources together to help one another. And that's what America should be about. That's what our nation should be about is community. And families impact the nation. So community is a very vital part of, of what we're doing and it's very necessary to have all the components of community. So I'm just gonna share a couple scriptures and then I wanna bring our guest on today. Um, let's see, Acts 2.42 says this, from the very beginning, believers were gathered in their homes and gathering in community. And they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers. That's from Acts. And, and Acts is such a great model for us about community. And we're all members of one body. None of us um, is the body by ourselves. 
right? We all have parts in the body. We talked about that on The Last Goodness Speaks. And, and so it is with the body of Christ. We're all a part of showing His goodness. And the kingdom of God has influence from within. It's within our hearts. It's the things that we desire to do to help one another. And so God first changes the heart of a person and then that internal change has external manifestations. So if you have a heart after God and you take on His nature, you can't help but want to help your people in your community. That's just the nature of God, right? So I want to bring on some guests today who are really part of this, this whole collaborative effort in our community. It takes so many different parts in community. It takes the churches. It takes a city officials. It takes healthcare workers. Every part builds a community, a strong community. And I also love the scripture in Proverbs 18.1. It says, whoever isolates himself seeks his own desire. He breaks out against all sound judgment. When you purposely isolate yourself, you, you remove yourself from the opportunity to enjoy community. And so I want to encourage you today, if you feel isolated, and I know COVID has really made it difficult, but there's other ways that you can be a part of community. And so we want you to know how valuable you are, how loved you are, and that you're a part of God's kingdom today. If you don't get anything else from the show, I want you to hear that today. Um, so community is life-giving and essential to follow Christ. And uh, also in Romans 12, it says, but because we're better together, than we are alone. That's what we are. We're better together than we are alone. And our God is in community. It's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, right? So He wants us to live the same way. So today I have a special, I have actually two special guests with me today, and they're a perfect example of how communities are strengthened and how they come together. So I want to introduce to you a couple people. The first person is Pastor Valencia, and Pastor Valencia, Dr. Carlos Valencia, and I'm so glad to have you on the show today. Thank you, Raquel. Mm -hmm. It's good to be here. And he is the pastor of Victoria. No, let me back up. Iglesia Bautista Victoria in Cristo. Did I say that right? Excellent. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. Pastor Valencia has been, his church is actually a partner of the Goodness Project here. He's been so instrumental in bringing the Hispanic community, uh, getting resources for the Hispanic community, and such a gift to the Goodness Project. So we're so thankful for you, Pastor Valencia. Thank you for letting me be here. Yeah, thank you so much. And I told him to put his pastor voice on today. So, uh, you know. <laughs> that preaching voice, that, that Baptist preaching voice on today. So we're so glad you're here. I have another guest with me. Her name is um, Carla Alvarado. Yes. Carla, and Carla is a community health worker. And we, we're just gonna talk today about strong communities and what's, <coughs> what makes a strong community. And they work together in the healthcare industry. Why don't you tell everybody here kind of how you guys know each other, what you do, and your passion. Well, actually, Thank you for letting me be in your show. I'm really excited and happy to be here. And well, I just want to say hello to everybody. I met Carla because we work in the same hospital. And Carla is a, a person who helps people in her community. She's very uh, passionate with whatever she has to do. Mm -hmm. so I can I'm tell very that. Excited. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm very excited when I met, I'm very excited when I identify people like her. Yeah. I say, hey, somebody just like me, but she's a woman, so that's good. Yeah. So she, <laughs> and this is a woman's TV show, so. <laughs> so yeah. she's a woman, so she can go places where I cannot be able that's to go. True. That's true. And, and well, I love to help people to raise and raise their voices and use uh, their own micro, micro, microphone. So when I see Carla using her voice, I say, you know what, that's amazing. So yeah. if me as a guy can help her to use her voice, so that's, that's, that's good. That's what this show is all about. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? <laughs> well, no, I just find out, so that's good. It's all about using our voices mm -hmm. to help one another. And, and that's what I do appreciate about you, Pastor Valencia, is that you're always promoting someone else or bringing someone else here to make sure they know about the Goodness Project and the resources, or if we need something for our staff, if there's anything we need, the shots, or you know, that we needed COVID shots at one time just to make sure everybody was had their shots, or, or the testing, not the shots, the testing. You made sure they had that, right? So you're always promoting and helping other women and to lift a woman up to make sure she has her voice. I think that's the heart of God. It's so beautiful. And you've very, been very instrumental in the, the Hispanic community with other churches, even though you're a pastor, 
of one church, you don't just promote your church. You're really about the community, the has, not just the Hispanic community, but that's kind of where God has planted you to help build and to bring resources, right? Yes, ma'am. You already say it. It's about community. It's yeah. not about one church. It's about God kingdom. It's not about Victorian Christo. It's about God work. It is. So, and I will, I love to glorify his work yeah. through people. So anytime that I see any pastor that they are willing to work in their community or they have a lot of questions about it, I am willing to teach them how they can be part of that. Yeah, that's so true. So tell us, Carla, how, how what you do, because you said that you're a, a community health worker, but we were talking a little bit before the show, and you were talking about you do this on the clock and off the clock. So yes. this is your passion. So I've, and I've done this all my life where I have been, I'm the first generation to speak, to be bilingual. So I have been the one yeah. To translate to make the calls to set up appointments you know because my family or my community didn't speak English so they would be go to Carla's house she can fill out the forms go to Carla's house to do this and I've been doing this since probably right before high school um, I won't say my age it's been a little bit since then <laughs> That's okay. she's 21, my age she's 21. <laughs> I my age but either. I've been doing all this lot all, all my life I've mm -hmm. been either finding resources or back in the day we didn't have Google, we had the yellow pages. You, know, you, had, to, you had to go through the phone book. Um, so I've always done it. I've always, how do I connect my community for something that they might need? Yeah. How do we connect them to, um, if they're having food insecurity, how do we connect them to a food pantry and connect them to a long-term solution? What would that look like? Um, you know, how do we connect them to health care? You know, here yes. there's a lot of people that do not have insurance. And so they avoid going to the doctor mm -hmm. because, right. uh, because they cannot afford it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how do we find those resources for these, uh, for our community in order for them to be healthy, in order for them to have um, what it's known as their social determinants of health? Mm -hmm. Because where yeah. they live, matters so much and it affects their health their zip code affects their health more than anything else yeah mm. so if they live in a food desert where there's nothing around where they can buy fresh fruits and vegetables how right. do we how do we address that right so that and they can have those nutrients that they need mm -hmm. that's that's just, just food is a big part of yes. a strong community making sure they have the right food and the nutrients mm -hmm. and health care and and you know we have we have i have my, part of my community they they have food insecurity and i call dr valencia dr valencia are you going to have a food drive in your in your church so i can send a couple of yes. a couple of people in my community even if they don't attend his church they are he's more than happy to go ahead and help he me is. or if we have some type of need then we are trying to be, if he cannot figure it out I might know somebody else. Yeah. That. See how beautiful this is? It's yes. it's healthcare workers working with churches, churches helping people. It's just I it's so beautiful to see how this is all coalescing together to it's not it's not just because they go to Pastor Vincent. Valencia's church. If there's a need, he's gonna meet the need. Yes. Right? So how has the the Goodness Project help your church meet some of those needs? Can you share a little bit about that? Oh well, excellent. You know what? during the pandemic time last year, the Goodness Project, they provide to us more than uh, 20,000 boxes of food. Yeah. And we have been able to do the distribution in our church to families. Yes. More than 3,000 families. So thank you. Thank you for- Oh, it's our honor. It's just about us all doing, doing it together, working together, you know, to provide those resources. And I think the resource is just a beginning. It's like, if there's a need, you provide, you, you make sure you, prov you're like, that's what you do, Carla. You, yes. you find out what their need is, you meet that need, but then you start building relationship mm -hmm. with them. And then you find out, and then you, you also mentioned something else I thought was very significant earlier. You talked about how sometimes you don't even, it's not even about just the medical needs they have. You'll just go sit and talk with them. It's, it's almost people need to know that you care for them. Mm -hmm. They need to have, they need to have that human touch, you know, to make sure that, hey, there's somebody checking up on me. Yeah. Um, before the pandemic, it was very common for 
you know, for us to visit people in their home just to have a social visit. Just how are you doing? Yeah. How have you, you know, are you able to make it to your appointment? Do you have food insecurity? Um, and, and that helps their health because mm -hmm. somebody cares. Yeah. And now it's a little bit different because of the pandemic. So we do this over the phone, mm -hmm. you know, which they still so much appreciate. Yeah. But as uh, a phone call can be a pretty powerful yes. thing, just Absolutely. saying, rather than a text. Absolutely. Like yes. a phone call hearing a voice on and the And sometimes, you know, what we try to do, we try to schedule those video calls yeah. because then we can read their, their body language That's good. Um, exactly. versus just over the phone, uh, which is very difficult. Not everybody has the ability to have a, a smartphone or yeah. something with a camera, but just that touch, somebody to know that they care for them. Yeah. It's, it, it just makes a difference. It's so powerful. And if you're watching right now, maybe you're like, that. that's me. I need to know that someone cares about me. I just want to stop right now and pause and say, we care and God cares about you. And if you don't have anybody reaching out or calling you, you know, but I just pray right now that somebody will. You'll find someone and maybe you can reach out. Sometimes we're waiting on someone to reach out to us when you can reach out to someone and check on them and then they feel cared for. I know many times when I have felt alone, it's easy for me to get into that mode of kind of, I call it the victim mentality, where I'm like, well, no one's really called me and checked on me, you know? And then the minute I step out and check on someone else, then something changes, mm -hmm. something shifts in us. Mm -hmm. And so thank you for what you do and in, in just your passion in life. And community is a powerful thing. And I think that the Lord's gonna begin to show us in the church and in our community in the healthcare industry. And let me just say this too, for those of you who are healthcare workers and first responders, God bless you for what you are doing, for all the times you've had to stay hours and hours late and, and the risks that you're, you're taking working in these units where COVID is, is, it's a detrimental disease sometimes. And especially for those who have underlying conditions. So we just wanna honor you and thank you right now um, for what you do for us. We take, we do not take that lightly. I don't take that lightly at all. When I need something at the hospital, I'm like, thank you. I'm telling the workers, thank you. I remember when my mom went to the hospital, I'm like, bless you. <laughs> the work is not easy. And you know what? The work's not easy for pastors either and ministers because that they're like first responders as well. On the other side, so Pastor Valencia, how has this pandemic um, you know, what are some challenges in the Hispanic community that we can be praying for as we move forward? Those that are watching right now, maybe they can pray and join you. Well, uh, the pandemic has been really hard and causes a lot of struggling issues. A lot of struggle, yeah. Yes, a lot of struggle in our church. Uh, actually, right now, my wife is, is in the hospital. Yeah. So she's in the hospital. She's um, fighting with the COVID. Yeah. And also I have another uh, person from church who have COVID. And we just find out on Monday, one person died right. from COVID. So as a pastor, it has been really difficult time for us. We has been, we have to be in the front line, praying for people, right. and be there for people. I uh, hear other pastor going in the same situation. And something that I just find out is, pastor, they are, they are tired. They yeah. are struggling with the mental issue. Yeah, Men the mental issues can be very difficult. Yeah, and there's there can be a lot of fear surrounding this, wondering, is it, are they gonna be okay? And I think that's where our faith comes into play. We have to believe that, that God is still on the throne, and regardless of whether it's COVID, and I don't wanna lighten the fact of, that your wife's in the hospital, that is a very serious mm -hmm. thing. I, we're praying for her and believing for a miracle there. Uh, but I do want to say whether it's cancer, I mean, some of you watching right now, maybe you have cancer and you have heart disease and there's a lot of other health issues. And so sometimes COVID gets, you know, COVID gets made bigger and there's other people struggling with other health issues too. And so, but we're here to pray. We're here to believe. We're here to encourage. We're here to walk through. And the healthcare system is so important. We need doctors. We, we can't do it without the doctors either. You know, I believe, I believe God's the great physician and I believe he can heal anybody that he wants to heal. But I also believe sometimes he uses healthcare workers. Sometimes he uses pastors. Sometimes he uses you to encourage someone. And we were also talking about how health can be improved by, by that caring for someone, by mm -hmm. talking to someone and caring, just the compassion that their health can actually be improved mm -hmm. by doing that for people. Yes, they just need 
they just need to know that somebody cares and it doesn't have to be that you only check you know don't yes check on your family but it might be the neighbor it might be the older neighbor in the, the grouchy older neighbor in the corner and it might be that you cannot do much we have done what we call emergency porch drop-offs you know we want to stay safe we want to stay healthy so we literally go to their doorstep mm -hmm. drop something off and just give them a call and say you have a little something at the door just yeah. know that i'm thinking of you i'm you know i'm praying for you and they are so so appreciative, so of, appreciative that. of that yeah so. yeah we're having to use creative ways i think yes. to to work through the challenges with covid we had some drive-through outreaches here um a lot of churches and pastors are having to think outside the box i think you mentioned earlier when we were talking that we've had to be more become more digitally um you know, educated digitally to share the gospel or to have our services online and things like that. But you wanted to say something, Pastor. Liz. I can tell it's you want to so say something that <laughs> I that I discovered through the pandemic is the pandemic gave us the opportunity to be our real community. Yeah. So this is the this is the time that we can be our real community. This is the time that I have to call my people from church and check on them and see how they are doing, what's going on, what is the problem that they are um, uh, vital uh, right now. So. Also, something that I discovered during the pandemic is the people, they are waiting for us to be the right door. It has to be at the right time. We have yeah. to be 100% and teach them that they are not alone. Yeah, and, yes. And they, we can walk with them through, through any situation that they go. Maybe we don't have the resources, but yeah. we can connect in them to organizations that already had the resources. Yeah. So like Goodness Project. So yeah. that's what we do in Victoria and Cristo. We identify that we don't have everything, but we have we know people that maybe they already God is leading them to use their talent in that way that they can bless other people. Yes. So that's why the pandemic I can see in both sides. One side is they cause a lot of problems. Yeah. But on the other hand, what I see is they gave us the opportunity to be our real community, mm. the opportunity to talk to people, to value the real stuff. Like yeah. in, in Christmas, everybody was before expecting or worry about what they're going to get as a gift. Yeah, I don't think that was a big worry this year. <laughs> no, just, we, people, wanna, we want families wanna, to be safe and everyone to love one another, be exactly. together. Exactly. So, yeah. like for example, one of the things that I, uh, that I see is people, they are more conscious about Oh, I'm glad that my family is doing okay. I'm glad yeah. that my dad is doing okay. I'm glad that, that I'm okay. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah, I love that perspective that, you know, God, God is a God, no matter what we face, He can turn it all around. And his, his word says that over and again. And every scripture that we read, and every story that we read, we, we see how even the most detrimental, difficult situations that God will use it. He won't waste it. And so that's what I hear you saying is he's not going to waste anything, whether the pandemic, whether it's the agenda that's being pushed out and voices being silenced. There's a lot going on culturally, too, that scares people and fear can be a factor there. But when faith is a factor and we say, you know, we're going to look at this, we're going to this perspective is that, hey, this has actually made a stronger community because we've been talking more, we've been calling and checking up on each other. That's really how it should be at the beginning. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. I love that. Yeah, like for example, I told my wife this morning, uh, Anita, when you went to Ethiopia 16 days, I was okay with that. And then you went to China for 22 days. I was okay for that. Yeah. And then you come back to Ethiopia for 16 days. I was okay for that. And you have been only five days at the hospital and I feel desperate. I have stress. Yeah. I feel lonely. <laughs> I have been feeling a lot of stuff. Can you mind how the other pastor feel? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Well, we're definitely praying for your wife and believing for a turnaround that she will be completely healthy and whole and, and recover from COVID. I know there's been many that have recovered from COVID and she's young, so she has a youth on her side. <laughs> That's a good thing. Yeah, good um, now you mentioned, Carla, you mentioned um, a story earlier that I thought was really instrumental. Could you tell the tell that story about the starfish? I thought it was um, like Carlos was saying, Dr. Valencia was saying, you know, we get into this mode that we wanna solve the world's problems. And 
that's my goal. One day I will do that. <laughs> but for now, I have to remember the uh, the starfish story. I don't know if you guys are familiar, but there was somebody, you know, there was this person walking down the, the beach and he was just throwing one starfish at a time back to the sea. Some people approached them and approached him and made fun of him because he was never going to be able to to save all the starfish um, from that beach. And he said, you're right. I will never be able to save them all, but I just saved this one and threw it back to the sea. So it's just yeah. little by little, just one thing at a time, one person at a time. And even one person might have multiple needs and you, we might not be able to meet all those needs. But if we were able to get them long-term, you know, connection to a food pantry so right. they're no longer going to have food insecurity we made a difference we made a difference yes. in one person i love that i love that story because it was about the one mm -hmm. one at a time one family at a time and each starfish had value so he was going to go pick up each starfish i just yeah. think that's the heart of god is that every one of you are valuable and you're a star you know you're a star in the kingdom and you have uh, purpose, and I think that's something that COVID has tried to rob, is our purpose and our destiny. And I don't care what disease it is, or what virus it is, or whatever comes our way, nothing can take away the purpose of God for your life. And so we want you to be encouraged today with that. And I just want to thank you both. I love that you both are so passionate about the community. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for teaching us, inspiring us to be a part more of the king. A, to be more a part of the kingdom. I mean, we were so busy this last year with the Goodness Project that I wanted to do more, but there was so much growth and so much need that, you know, the Goodness Project just grew drastically. And so there was just a lot of work that had to be done to set the foundation and we're gonna do more and more, but we, we've we connected more with community initiatives, hospitals and, and um, you know, mayors all around the city and in Israel, because we believe that when we all work together and it takes more time, it takes time to make those phone calls. Yes. It mm. takes time, Pastor, to, to call and check on the people in your church, but it is worth it. And I want you to know today you're worth it. And so thank you for you know letting giving Carla a voice. I think that's the most beautiful thing too that you shared you. is that you're giving Carla a voice because she has a gift um, to connect and do things in the community. And, and thank you for being a voice to the Hispanic community. And, um, for the Goodness Project. So we thank you so much for being a part of Goodness Speaks today. Thank you so much. If you want to um, connect with Pastor Valencia, be sure and connect with him at Victoria. Let's see, Victoria, can you share that website? It's too small for me to read on here. Victoriancristo.org. <laughs> Victoriancristo and we'll put that up on the screen for you. Uh, we're just so grateful for the God and for who he is and, good, and for the goodness of God in the earth. We are so excited that you joined in today. And again, we value this time together. Can't wait to see you next time. Be sure and connect with us here at The Goodness Project and goodnessproject.com. Easy for you to find us and we're praying for you. I'm just gonna close us out in a quick prayer. Right now, would you join me in prayer? Lord, I thank you for this time. I thank you that you created us to be connected. You never created us to be alone. And I pray right now, Lord, if there's someone watching that feels alone, that you will meet them right where they're at, that you will let them know that the stress or the anxiety, or even if they're sick in their body, God, that you're the God of the impossible. You're still the God that heals. You're still the God that cares. You're the one that gives us the ability to care, Lord. We can't even take the, the glory for that ourselves, and we don't want to. We want to thank you, Lord, that you have created us in your perfect love so that we can show your perfect love to those around us. Help us to strengthen the community. Help us to be a part and to join in to the community and not just be in our little homes doing our own thing, but that we would invite others in. Maybe we open our home up or maybe we Zoom with someone and maybe it's smaller groups, whatever, Lord, whatever creative way you want us to do it, we ask today that around the world, for those that are watching, that you would let them know that the power of Christ is the power of community. We love you, we thank you, and I just praise you that your voice is the voice that's speaking the loudest in the earth. And I thank you for using these beautiful people that were on with me today and for using those that are watching in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being a part of Goodness Speaks today. We'll see you next time. God bless you.